As you can see, uh, Seniesa and Blair Cobbs and Ryan Garcia uh, gave, gave the fans an amazing uh, performance from each and one of them. And uh, let's take this opportunity to uh, applaud them and, and congratulate them because this is the future of boxing right here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of every single fighter that steps inside the ring. You guys did a wonderful job tonight. I mean, people don't understand the pressure that the fans put on you to give a great performance. And, you know, when you have a fighter that goes down on the canvas like Cobbs and then gets back up and wins the fight, you have a fighter like Ryan who everybody doubted. Oh, no, Duno, Duno is too tough. Duno is, uh, my, oh, my God, well, why are you putting him with Duno? Because we believe in him, that's why. Because he believes in himself. So when he knocks him out in one round, whoo, I mean, that's, 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 that's a... Uh, that's a champion for you. So congratulations, Ryan. The attendance today was uh, 14,490, and we couldn't be happier with Canelo's performance. You know, his, his, his calculation, his, his, his game plan, what, what he was trying to accomplish, we all knew within Golden Boy um, that this fight wasn't going to, you know, end in one, two, three, six, eight rounds. We knew that, that this fight was going to end in 10, 11 rounds. And that's exactly what happened. Canelo is a fighter who will continue to prove everyone wrong. And I have to admit, at times, he proves me wrong, but that's who Canelo is. Canelo is a fighter who is special, and, and therefore we must, we must appreciate, we must acknowledge that he is not only one of the best, if not the best Mexican fighter, but he is the best pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world today. And we have to give him that, we have to give him that, that acknowledgement. We have to understand that Canelo moved two weight divisions to fight at light heavyweight. You can't tell me that Crawford or Lomachenko or, or anybody else in boxing is daring to be great like Canelo? Is anybody moving up in weight class? Is anybody unifying titles? No, Canelo is because he wants to be great. He wants to leave a legacy. And that's what legends do, is leave a legacy and take risks. You know, if you want to become a great fighter, you have to take risks. And that's exactly uh, what, what Canelo did tonight. Yes, it was difficult, but he, he did a hell of a job. So on this note, let me, uh, let me introduce to the podium first um, a young woman who, who gave us a, an amazing, amazing fight. You know, I'm very proud of, of women's boxing. I'm very, very proud of women's boxing because finally, finally it's happening. Finally, women's boxing is getting the respect it deserves, and it's long overdue. Seniesa, come up to the podium. Congratulations. Congratulations on, on your win. You did an incredible job, and you made East LA proud. Thank you guys so much. Um, first of all, I want to thank God for the victory. And um, thank my team, thank Golden Boy Promotions, Robert Diaz for making the fight happen, and Oscar and Eric and everybody involved. And um, 
<laughs> yeah, who's scared now? Marlene, where are you? Oh, that's right. You're not here. So, um, <laughs> you know, it, it feels great to um, just show, show tonight that I was not afraid. Um, Marlene's used to pushing her opponents back in fights, and we had a, a great game plan. I pushed her back most of the fight. Uh, then she tried to box me when she was hurt, and I still got inside. And um, I should show that I can fight different ways. And um, yeah, in the ninth round, I heard her say that uh, she can't see. That's, you're pretty much quitting when you say that you can't see. Um, I would never, in a fight, say that I can't see. I fought through so many adversities. I, had a, I got cut by headbutt uh, my last fight. Um, I fought in Tijuana, Mexico, with, and my dressing room was flooded to the floor, and I still went in there and got the victory. Um, I fought with my fingers fractured in like three fights, and you know nothing can break me mentally because I'm a fighter. That's what I do. I'm like I'm an animal in the ring, and I hope you guys, uh, you know, saw that tonight, and you guys see that in my fights moving forward. So um, I just want. I want to be the best at 105 pounds, 108 pounds, and um, you know, 112 is not my natural weight class, but I have the belt here now, and if the fight is right, then I'll also fight at 112 pounds. Um, so just thank you guys so much for all of the support. Thank you, Golden Boy Promotions, and um, looking forward to moving forward and getting some more bouts. <laughs> let's, go. let's do it. Thank you. Okay, any questions uh, for uh, Sanisa? Um, definitely, I don't fight for belts, I just, I fight for the victory. It's, it's not about the belts to me. Um, it's about getting the victory and that's the most fulfilling thing, for sure. Sanisa? Oh, real quick over here. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, first Thank and you. foremost. Um, knowing that there was so much bad blood going into this fight, what was the feeling when you saw that the fight was stopped and that you won in the cards? Oh, I was very, very excited, very uh, relieved and happy. Like, I mean, I'm not much of a talker. Everyone who knows me knows that. And Marlene made it seem like I'm the talker, and I was the one who was afraid to fight her. Um, but. Like I said, I've been boxing for almost 20 years. I had over 100 amateur fights. I fought girls in the beginning of my career who outweighed me the next day by almost 20 pounds. Um, you know, I, I don't fear anybody. And like I said, Marlene was the last person that I would ever fear. Thank you. Any more questions right there? Um, because I feel like I can fight so many different ways. I can work the body. I can I can box. I have good defense. Um, I could fight on the inside very well. And I feel like um, I'm very versatile. And Marlin fights the same way in every fight. And I studied it very well. So I knew that um, I could. I I knew that I just had to give make her feel uncomfortable and push her out of her com comfort zone. Because when you do that, then it's like mentally she starts breaking down little by little and that's exactly uh, what happened. <clears throat> yeah, it's very satisfying, but um, I just want to go back into the gym and, and focus on the next fight and con continue to win uh, world titles. Yeah, thank you. What do you want next? Um, I would like to go back down to 108 and fight the WBC world champion, Yesenio Gomez. And um, I'll fight at 112 pounds if it's the right fight. Yeah. Do you consider this beef settled with her? <laughs> I know for her it'll never be settled because she'll, she'll still have something to complain about. She'll say the headbutt. Uh, distracted her, the headbutt this, the headbutt that. Um, with or without the headbutt, I was winning clearly on all the scorecards, and I was giving her a beating no matter what. So the headbutt doesn't matter. Like, if you're a fighter, you'll fight through it. You still hate her? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. 
All right, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sinisa. Thank you. So this this uh, this next gentleman, you know, he's he's a he's a breath of fresh air for the sport of boxing. You know, and we need more colorful, flamboyant fighters like this, you know, who are who are likable but who are fighters, you know, who, who, who give it their all, who, who go down on the canvas, get back up and win fights. So it is really my pleasure. I mean, not only after hearing his story and where he came from, where he's been, but what he wants to accomplish. This is what the American dream is all about. So I'm really, really proud to uh, introduce Blair the Flair Cobbs. <laughs> I would like to thank God for this victory. For one, my incredible team, my incredible boxing team, all of you, every single coach, Bones, Brandon, incredible. Incredible, um, all the incredible athletes that I've uh, sparred along the way. I would like to thank Golden Boy and the Zone and everyone that's, that's, uh, that's under that banner. I'd like to thank Oscar. Bernard, everybody. I would like to thank, finally, but definitely not, not least, is the fans. I thank the fans for coming out and to support boxing and its rise to greatness. I believe that I am the most exciting man in boxing. In this fight, I've showed what it means to be great once more by getting knocked down, by going through adversity and rising to the occasion off the canvas to win, not just in the decisive longevity of a, of a un, un, you know, unanimous decision, but an actual knockout. And, you know, at the end of the day, somebody got hurt. Um, there was some ribs broken and there was some chins tested in this fight. Um, and I, and I, think, I think my opponent, he's tough as nails. He's never been knocked down before. And he's definitely not been hurt to the face too many times I've ever seen. Um, it's been a wonderful, exciting moment being here with you guys. And I thank you. And I thank everybody on Golden Boy, Eric. I thank everybody for allowing me to be the opener and welcoming you guys to the biggest show on earth, Canelo and Kovalev. Questions? Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Any questions uh, for Blair? Is that is that is that one? Right can I can I get that question? Is that is that is that a question? Yeah, is that a question? Yeah. <laughs> it is Blair the Flair, the baddest man on the planet. Woo! Go ahead, go ahead. All right, Blair Cobbs is back. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, I was completely cool like it was it was more so off balance shot he caught me in the back of my head threw me off for just a slight second I got right back up and controlled everything um, from that moment on um, he throws the looping shots he's very awkward it's kind of like playing basketball with a guy that don't know how to play basketball which was mostly me at the time <laughs> so he, he, he's very awkward. You have to figure him out first. So it took me a couple rounds to break him down and figure out exactly how to address the situation. Each fight, I'm getting better. Each fight, I'm growing as an individual, as a fighter, and as a showman. So you can expect more from Blair the Flair. Blair, uh, you, uh, you, ended up, you ended up coming back from that knockdown to stop your opponent in the sixth round. Um, in between those rounds, in the middle rounds, we saw you work the body, we saw you uh, 
go up and down, use your head movement. What was going through your mind uh, right after you dropped them with that picture perfect straight right in the sixth? That is showtime, baby. It's showtime. Matter of fact, the show don't start until you find some adversity. I was happy that I got knocked down early because that was that's what that was that little kick that got me going. It was like okay, now the show really starts, and I build back up one fight at a time, one one round at a time, one second at a time, win each round decisively, and then of course I've uh, I've started blocking the shots with the hands and, and, um, and, and mixing different types of defensive measures. And, um, and, and then, of course, hey, the Mexican came out of me. When, when, it's time, when it's time to fight, the Mexican come out of me. And, we, and hey, we put on a good show. And hey, I'm, the ba I'm a bad man. When it comes, hey, y'all want to go blow for blow? We can go blow for blow. And somebody's going to go down every time. I'd love to hear that, Blair. My next question, just who do you want next? Um, I'm not calling anybody out right now. I'm just uh, enjoying this moment. I'm not the head attraction of this venue. I'm just the opener. And with all respect, I cannot take over the show completely and give 100% um, respect to my man Ryan and Canelo Alvarez. Um, I'm not calling anybody out, but I'm definitely, I'm definitely putting everybody in the welterweight division on notice that Blair the Flair has arrived. Thank you, Blair. Um, primeramente, primeramente a, a todos, gracias, gracias por estar aquí, gracias a, por, por darle la atención merecida a este, a este gran evento. Eh, y quiero, quiero decir que el Canelo, el Canelo nue nuevamente demostró, demostró su habilidad. Eh, demostró demostró que él es el mejor peleador libra por libra en el mundo entero lo demostró porque subiendo dos divisiones no es fácil si era fácil cualquiera lo, lo haría y nadie lo está haciendo ni, ni un Crawford, ni un Lomachenko, ni nadie está subiendo dos divisiones para pelear con un campeón mundial. Y el Canelo noqueó a Sergey Kovalev eh, en una manera espectacular. Se convirtió en campeón en cuatro divisiones y eso... eso Eso para cualquier boxeador es algo, algo muy especial, que, que requiere mucho esfuerzo, mucha disciplina, mucha dedicación. Así que para, para mí y en los ojos de muchos, el Canelo, el Canelo se está convirtiendo en el mejor campeón mexicano en la historia del boxeo. Y no ha terminado. El Canelo está comenzando. Y eso a mí me, me orgullece. Eso a mí me, me, me hace muy feliz porque no solamente está ganando campeonatos mundiales, pero está, está levantando la bandera en alto, la bandera mexicana en alto a nivel mundial, a nivel internacional. Así que estamos en Golden Boy muy orgullosos de él. Estamos eh, muy contentos con, con lo que ha logrado y, y lo que viene son cosas muy grandes. Um, next fighter. Okay, uh, Kathy Duva has a, an announcement to make. Kathy. Hey, Kathy. Okay, so uh, out of an abundance of caution, Agus and I uh, and Jolene have just forced Sergey to go to the hospital. Uh, he seems fine, but the way things have been going lately, we're just not taking any chances. I'm sure you'll understand. Um, he wanted me to tell you all 
that he's sorry, although I kept telling him he should never say that. Uh, he fought a great fighter tonight, uh, a legendary fighter, and you can't make a mistake against a guy like Canelo. Uh, I think Sergey was fighting a terrific fight, but uh, Canelo Alvarez is uh, the best fighter of this time, I believe. I think he proved it tonight, and uh, Sergey wanted everybody to know that he plans to be back and win uh, light heavyweight titles again, as I'm sure he will. So uh, thank you all, and uh, continue. Thank you, Kathy. You know, I've, I've, I've been here before many times as a fighter where I've, I've had to prove myself over and over and over and over and it's never it's a, it's a never-ending story it's a never-ending story because because you know i i had the gold medal i was winning world titles i was i guess better looking back then um but it was a never-ending story. Well, when are you going to fight this fighter? Well, you're not good enough for this fighter. You're, you, you have to prove yourself. You know, but that's, that's, that's the story of a fighter that is becoming great. That is destined to become great. And this next young man is, is, going, to, is going to be experiencing those same questions, you know, and he's going to continue to prove. And this fight tonight was a testament of his abilities, of his work ethic, of his, of his discipline, of his desire to become great. So I'm, I'm, I'm privileged and I'm honored to be working with a young man that that is that has the potential the potential to uh, to win many world titles and become the face of boxing and and so on and so on so Ryan congratulations let's give it up what's up everybody <laughs> What a great night, right? For my team, uh, we came in there, we trained hard together, you know, me and Canelo, and we did what we do in the gym. I mean, I didn't really expect anything else than that. Um, I know I was getting a lot of slack and people were saying that, uh, you know, maybe I was too cautious, I didn't want to take this fight, and, you know, I was scared of the power, or I wasn't ready. Uh, I think I proved that, you know, that wasn't the case this fight. I've been working with a lot of things with Eddie, uh, and I showcased that. Um, I know it was only one round, but I definitely, if it would have settled in, I promised you guys would have seen the improvements, but it didn't get the chance to do it. Um, but I just want to thank God, thank you, Jesus, for uh, you know getting me through this. Thank you to my team, my dad. Thank you to Lupe, my advisor. Thank you to Golden Boy, Oscar, my guy Bernard, always giving me motivation. Every time I talk to him, it's like, Man, I know I'm gonna get something. So, uh, and I just want to thank you know Robert Diaz, everybody part of the whole show. You know, uh, the zone. This is just a dream come true for me. Like, I never really thought you know coming from Victorville. You know, I had to train in a garage because we have no money for a uh, gym membership. You know, I started making videos on Instagram. You know, me just all flashy, and you know c climbing up the amateur ranks. You know. I was on top of there, but like nobody ever gave me my credit even back then. You know, they looked at me and said, ah, this kid looks a certain way. Uh, he'll never become a champion. He'll never be able to do it in the pros. And I always just had that, that passion inside me and that will to prove everybody wrong. But, you know, thank you, God. And thank you, everybody, for uh, coming out. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wanted to showcase uh, what I've been working on in the gym, but he came at me like Marvin Hagler, you know, versus Tommy Hearns. He was right on me. I'm like, 
man, can I just settle down and throw my jab? But he wasn't letting me. He was coming in with his head, throwing the big overhand, trying to knock me out. So I was like, all right, I, told, I, I was like, dad, if he comes at me like that, I'm gonna just start throwing my, my shots. And I brought it out. <laughs> Ryan. Right here. Hello. Uh, Ryan, uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, I think in uh, your, your post-fight uh, interview, uh, about places where you can hurt hurt someone when you punch them. I noticed that you were going around uh, your opponent's uh, guard tonight, hitting him around his ears, and, and finally on his temple when you KO'd him. Was this something you uh, planned or you've been working on, or is it, it just what presented itself tonight? I just watched great fighters, you know, back in the past, you know, where they hit the fighters, and then I learned, you know, watching Sugar Ray Robinson, watching all the great fighters, you know, how they punch with that looping left hook, or they punch with that hard overhand right, you know, you often see them catch them behind the ear, or right on the chin, and that's what I started thinking, all right, let me just, because I know I have that punching ability, I just got to place them where you can knock somebody out, and then you don't really got to hit that hard, you just hit them right here, right in the temple, or right in the chin. And they're going to go down. Ryan. Uh, back here. First of all, congratulations. Yep, yep. <laughs> First of all, congratulations on the victory. Um, not sure if you were aware. Um, somebody was uh, here kind of scouting, Devin Haney. Uh, with you winning the WBC silver title, obviously he was just elevated to champ with Loma at franchise. But I asked him, and he said that that's a fight that he wants. And he says, why wait? Um, make it happen. Do you think that that's a fight that should happen within the next year in 2020? Or do you think that waiting to maximize the finances is a better idea with that fight? It's not about the maximizing, you know, the money or the pay. It's just, you know, I'm moving at my pace. Whatever Devin, you know, wants, he's going to say that. But in reality, you know, it's not going to happen, you know, by 2020. You know, it's more, more possible to happen in 2021. You know, it's just... You know, I'm just going to keep it real. I'm not going to, you know, paint a picture for you guys to be like, oh, we're going to fight next year. And then it doesn't happen. That's why I stopped calling out names because, you know, it's just not realistic. Um, from your experience, what advice would you give to those kids who want to reach their dreams but have faced out along the way? My main thing I want to let all those kids know is that you follow your heart, your, your, your instincts, you know. Whatever somebody's saying to you, you know, that's when you know you're doing something well. When people are trying to bring you down, trying to hurt your soul, you know, I'm not going to lie. All the hate I was getting, it was hurting me because, like, I love this sport so much that I take... I'm so emotional, I'm emotionally involved into the sport. So when I hear somebody from the media say, oh, I'm not that good, I can't beat Duno, like it literally hurts, like literally. I'm like thinking about it. But then I think to myself, like I got here by just believing in myself. So to the kids, wherever you come from, believe in yourself and train and work your ass off and it will pay off. Anybody else? Are we good? Well, I had like a little plan, you know, just my own thoughts. I wanted to fight Lenares next, and then I wanted to fight uh, Luke Campbell. Those are the fights, realistically, that I want. So that was basically what I... That's my plan. I said I wanted to fight Avery Sparrow, then fight Duno here, then fight Lenares, and then fight Luke Campbell. I didn't change. I haven't changed anything. This is just what it is. Because you, you, you'll never get ahead if you're always looking at the next racer on the side of you. You got to worry about yourself. You know, you're going to just slow down if you keep looking to the left or the right. You got to worry about yourself. Don't hate, and just work hard. That's it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.